Dear everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever you are, whenever you are, peace be upon you all. And I wish you peaceful and uh, happy life, inshallah. Today, the discussion is about building and constructing community. And is it easy or hard or difficult or impossible? Our life on earth is about building the building blocks of our life to come. Whether heaven, inshallah, for all of you, or astaghfirullah azim for us, somebody else, hellfire. So our life on earth is about building the building blocks of our life to come. And when we look at buildings and construction, I give you the most important example or unit or society in the community is the family. The family which is made of man and woman of a, a mother and, a, and, a, and, and father, wife and husband. You know what is the name of the wedding night? Sisters and brothers, Laylat al Bina, the night of building. Do you think when I marry my wife and she marries me on maybe the 5th of October, whatever it is, or 7th of October, or 10th of October, or whatever you call it in December, that we are going to call it Laylat al Bina, we are going to build the house, build the bricks? No, build future generation to come. That's why the process of building a family is tedious and difficult. The wife has to choose the right partner to enable her to build the family. Family is the future generation. And the husband also has to find the right wife to help him to build the family. So it's a complex, complicated process of building society, not only family. Because this family is the most important structure in the society which upon the family we can build community, we can build society, we can build nation, we can build actually civilization and renaissance. Everyone in the society is a builder, is a builder. Engineer, civil engineer, building the roads, the bridges, the malls, and any structured building in the city. The farmer, building farms, farmyards, gardens, even the agricultural economy, as well as the livestock economy. The economist, building the path of national economy of the country, maybe the global economy, maybe the regional economy and other economies. The scientist building the system of the creation of science and technology and knowledge, seeking knowledge. The teacher is also building the minds of generation to come. The media presenter building the philosophical thinking of the society, the social philosophical thinking or societal philosophical thinking. The faqih, which is the scholar in Islam or in Christianity and religion, building the foundation of moral values, rights and duties of societies, of, not of societies, of citizens. The politician building the path of policies and uh, regulation and the, the, the required spaces of civil liberty. The researchers building the legislation and the law of laws that we need 
to govern and regulate our society. The artist, the actor and the actresses, building the dimension of the different cultures and pioneering inside the society. The legislators building also actually the, 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 the spaces of civil liberty. The historian building the processes which lead to understanding the history of Renaissance civilizations and the quality of the role models who spend their life to save our country and our society. So each one of those is a builder. It takes them years. They spend their life to do that. They do a lot of effort. They go to many experiments, trials, failure and success. Nothing is easy and nothing is for free. Now I'll be answering some of the questions. Is building anything in life is easy? No, nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. Everything in life needs time, needs effort, needs thinking, needs trying, and it might fail or succeed. That's why building anything, including the family, which I mentioned earlier on, even if you build the family, my wife would be pregnant for nine months to have a one-year-old baby. My baby, when he comes out from the womb of his mother, is not going to the school. We have to look after him or her for years. Then in 30 or 40 years, he could become or she could become a professor or lawyer or teacher or whatever you call it. Why everything we build needs an effort? Because nothing is like this. You know, when you get something easy, where you have this, when you go to heaven, inshallah. When you go to heaven and you wish to eat curry, just say curry, it comes to you. Samosa, it comes to you. Kebab, it comes to you. Dress, it comes to you. Drink, it comes to you. But in earth, we have to spend time, effort, money, ideas to build something which might fail and might not succeed. Building companies and building institutions and building uh, industries or uh, factories. I have two examples, contemporary examples. One of them, and both of them, subhanAllah, both of them are not highly educated. Just you could be able to read and write. One of them was from Pakistan after the separation of East and West, uh, of, of India from Pakistan. His name was Abdul Sattar Eidi. When he came out from Pakistan, so from India to Pakistan after the independence of Pakistan, his mother was sick. He couldn't be able to find an ambulance to take her to hospital. She died. 1951. He started his idea with building the Abdusattar Edi Foundation or Edi Foundation of ambulances. Before he died, I think in 2016, it was the largest, one of the largest, most largest organization which having hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, 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 of ambulances in Pakistan, employing employing and have volunteers of tens of thousands of people. And he was not qualified from Harvard or from Cambridge, from Oxford, or from London. He changed his idea into this foundation, which becomes like a great example. The second example in business, 
was another young boy, an orphan from the countryside of Egypt. Very poor family. But the boy wanted to have something to do. And he was a tradesman. Even at the age of seven, he used to trade. His budget or his capital was about 30 Egyptian pence. He used to tell his, father, his brother in Egypt, so in Cairo, please buy something for me for aid, like cookies and other things like this. And he used to sell it to the children and made out of 30 pence another 10 pence or 20 pence profit. Both Abdul Sattar Idi and Haj Mahmoud al Arabi, Abdul Sattar Idi of Pakistan and Haj Mahmoud al Arabi of, 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 uh, of Egypt actually did not have university or secondary school degree. The philosophy of thinking of Haj Mahmoud al Arabi was based on two things. First one was trade to sell, not trade to make profit. No. From his it was early young who, uh, uh, early age. The second, trade to employ young people. His dream was to employ 1,000 young people every year. He started from the 30 pence in, uh, when he was at the age of seven to when he died having a holding group, having 15 companies multi-billion uh, pound holding group. I don't know how many uh, million, uh, tens of thousands, about th 40,000 people were employed by Haji Mahmoud al-Arabi before he died. So when you look at it, the story of these two young men in social and humanitarian work, Abdul Sattar Idi, and in economical and trades work and the industrial work is Haj Mahmoud al-Arabi. Successful examples for each and every one of us did not need a degree, did not need a big amount of money to start their project. How can we make our organization, institution sustainable? We can make it sustainable if we keep looking after the idea, the original idea. Abdul Sattar Idi was talking about ambulances. It was ambulances, specialism. Haj Mahmoud al-Arabi talking about trade to sell till he became a multi-billionaire, employing tens of thousands of people. Keep looking after the idea. Never, ever. You people worship the one who produced the idea. Keep looking after the idea, not the one who produced the idea. Because if we look at the one who produced the idea, we will fail. Because we will forget about the idea itself. If you want your idea to be sustainable and last for years, keep nurturing the idea, developing the idea, protecting the idea, and empowering the idea. The other question is, and share idea with others. Let your idea to be owned by the society. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us to strive on earth, to construct earth? This, was, this came in the discussion between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was making this dialogue with the angels. And he told them, he told them, I am going to make a representative for me on earth. They told them, Are you going to put in, on earth people to fight one another, to kill one another, to split the blood of one another? And we are worshiping you. He said, I know what you don't know. Then, he went to Adam and taught him all the names of objects and of subjects of science and technology, of uh, literacy, of art, of history, of uh, botany, of agriculture, uh, of, uh, I mean, uh, agriculture, yeah, of uh, industry, of, of uh, economy, of politics, of climate change, all this, all this knowledge. 
asma kulla so it was incepted it was put in the hearts and mind and soul of adam alayhi salam then he went to the angels he told them asked them about this name said la ilma lana illa ma allamtana oh allah we don't know anything apart from what you have taught us he is the knowledge the knowledge the knowledge made the angels to make sujood to Adam. If you think that you can build a society only by striving, you are mistaken. Striving in life or struggling life must be accompanied by knowledge. Without knowledge, we'll be chasing our tail ends. We'll be going around ourselves like headless chicken. So knowledge and struggle to build the life. And my concluding remark is never ever let anyone to put you down or to suppress you. Never keep listening to these people who are very pessimistic, very negative. Let you to be surrounded by negative uh, atmosphere. Or negative energy, as they call it. No, never. Kick them out. We don't want you. There is no success without failure. Don't worry if you failed once or twice or three times. I failed many times in my life. In medicine, my medical field, in social work, we fail. But we have to try again. We have to keep considering failure is a part of our success. We cannot fulfill our dreams without failing. Failing is not a bad thing. Failing is a landmark and a reminder for every and each one of us that we have to succeed. If we, if we, we've been defeated in this match, we have to win the second match. Then we have to mention the, the, the football league and, 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 and. If we did not get the gold medal, We'll go to the bronze now. We'll have to try next time to get the gold. Because if we, that's what, if we are focusing on winning the gold medal. So, to conclude, building is a very tedious, difficult, uh, long process. And it's a lifetime process. The people who do not engage in the construction of life will be sidelined and nobody will mention them. But the people who are engaging themselves in consulting others and connecting to others and building partnership with others to build the society are the people that will remember forever. And forever I'd love to remember each and every one of you. I would love to read your names in the history book, in the achieving book. But without building, without become tired, without spending our money, our life and effort to, help, to, save, to save and help our community, we cannot build any future for future generation. Thank you very much for being with us for these few minutes and I'll see you in another episode soon inshallah assalamu alaikum